Hi there! This presentation is all about different invasive plants you can find in the Greater Vancouver area. Its intent is to help people find out what is invasive and what's not so that they can work towards helping stop the spread of invasives further in the future. Himalayan blackberry is possibly the most well-loved and most prevalent invasive plant in the Lower Mainland. It's so common and widespread that people don't even think of it as invasive. People also really love the berries, so if you ever try and remove it, sometimes they'll get angry. However, the plant's thorns are even angrier. Scotch broom is another extremely common invasive plant. You can find it pretty much anywhere you look. The yellow flowers, which come out in spring, turn into little pea pods filled with seeds. In later summer, these pea pods then explode and fling seeds everywhere. Amazingly, these seeds can also last up to 80 years in the soil. This vine is one of the worst offenders, in my opinion. It's known as morning glory or bindweed. It grows so quickly that it seems to engulf entire trees and shrubs almost overnight. It's also very difficult to get rid of, as when you hand pull it, it tends to just break. So, it's very difficult to remove. Japanese knotweed and other members of the knotweed family have gained huge infamy over the last few years. There's currently a large campaign focusing on their eradication. Basically, the problem is that they're able to grow through asphalt and concrete, causing structural problems. They're also able to stifle out any native plants with alarming efficiency. Giant hogweed is another plant that's become problematic in recent years. Most people have heard of it because it's been on the news a lot. The main problem is that it creates a toxic sap that if you get it on your skin or in your eyes, it can cause third degree burns or blindness. Most people can recognize it because it gets very tall and makes distinctive large white flowers. Common tansy is a small, yellow flowered plant with fern-like leaves. It also has a quite distinctive fragrance if you touch it. It's quite common along roadsides and ditches but it can be problematic because it can spread into meadows and take over those areas from native plants. Lamium is another particularly problematic invasive plant. It's a ground cover that grows extremely quickly and can grow in total shade. That makes it extremely problematic because it can overtake our native forest environments with ease. Gardeners used to love it because it was so easy to grow, but that's part of what makes it so invasive. English ivy is a relentless growing and killing machine. It's able to grow up trees and actually strangle them to death. It grows both as a vine and as a ground cover, which makes it spread very efficiently through our forests. It's shade tolerant as well, which makes it very difficult to remove and to control. English holly is a plant well loved by many, especially at Christmas time with those festive red berries. However, these berries are also well loved by birds. Birds will eat the berries and then spread them into remote areas that are otherwise untouched by invasive plants. Spurge laurel is a small, unassuming shrub, often missed by many. It's evergreen and has tiny, little yellow flowers. However, every part of the plant is extremely toxic. It also is shade tolerant, which makes it able to outcompete our native plants and create problems in our forests. Butterfly bush is well loved by gardeners and landscapers for its ability to attract butterflies and bees. However, every plant is capable of producing thousands of seeds. And every plant is also able to grow at an alarming rate. It's a very aggressive plant and can spread very quickly through many areas. This plant is known as gout weed. <laughs> I can't think of a weed with an uglier name than this one has. Gout weed is a shade tolerant perennial, so it's very difficult to control. It comes back year after year and is able to spread through tiny rootlets underground, so it's very difficult to remove as well. Ground covers can be some of the worst offenders as far as invasive plants go, and this one is no exception. This one is called Japanese Spurge, and it was well loved in the landscape industry for its ability to create a dense ground cover that nothing else can grow through. However, this very characteristic is what makes it problematic. Periwinkle is a beautifully flowered evergreen ground cover. Traditionally, people have loved it. However, it's shade tolerant and creates such a thick mat that nothing can grow through it. It's also nearly impossible to remove, 
since the stems are so brittle, when you try to pull it out, they just break. This plant is known as Himalayan balsam or policeman's helmet. It's an annual that grows up to about six feet tall in a single season. Every plant produces seed pods that are spring-loaded and can shoot the seeds very far. If you've ever walked through a patch of them, seeds will be flying off in every direction, spreading like crazy. This plant is a type of clematis vine that seems to have become a worse offender in recent years. It's called Old Man's Beard and it gets its name because the white flowers turn into puffy, fluffy seed pods that sort of look like little beards in later summer. It's incredibly aggressive and can grow up trees and completely strangle them. If you're a beer lover, you should recognize this plant right away. It's called hops. The little cones are actually one of the main ingredients in brewing. However, this vine is extremely aggressive and it's able to completely overgrow other plants, leading potentially to their death. This small orange flowered perennial has been gaining more attention in recent years. It's known as orange hawkweed. It's often found along roadsides and in meadows, but it can also be problematic at higher elevations. It's quite commonly seen on the ski hills of Cyprus and Seymour. Yellow flag iris is perhaps one of the prettiest and most problematic wetland invasive plants. People tend to love it for its yellow flowers in spring and tend to ignore it the rest of the year since it just looks like plain old green blades of grass. However, it's able to infiltrate wetlands and take them over at an alarming rate. Purple loosestripe is perhaps one of the best known wetland invasive plants. However, in our area, it is somewhat under control due to the release of several biological control agents that have been attacking it over the years. You'll still see it, however, in wetlands and ditches and other wetted areas. All of the lovely photos used in this presentation are thanks to a variety of different individuals. I found their work using a Creative Commons search, and here are the sources for all of the images. This presentation is also licensed under the Creative Commons guidelines and is free to use for non-commercial purposes for anyone.